Hey guys, you wanna know how to make one of the easiest progress bar system in UEFM? I'm gonna show you. Set it. All right, so we're back. I know it's been a while, but we're just gonna get straight in. So what we're first gonna want to do, all right, is please join the Discord below in the description and go to UEFN downloadable. Okay, so let's just go our disc and I'll roll down or we'll find UEFN downloadable. I want you to download all of the assets right here. Okay, so basically these have the material, these have the widget, and we have just the image for the progress bar. Okay, so what we're gonna do to actually import that is just right click here. All right, uh, right click here or on an object. I believe so we can just show and explore and brings us to the content. Okay. So here is where we're going to drag these files into. I'm just going to make a new tab here, downloads, and I am just going to get file. All right. So I've put the files in right here. Okay. So I've put the files into my content folder. Now get head back into UEFN and we see Zoe oh, right there. So it's simple and they popped up here. So I'm just going to go a little bit through this does here. So basically what this is right here a progress bar that's our material and this has all the calculations in need to basically build up the progress bar based on our value in our material collection or yeah our material collection okay so it does calculations to basically make this bad. so basically that's what it does here um we don't want to get into too much about um if you do i will definitely make something short about it and i'll do it I'll do it in a short. So otherwise, we see we have our material parameter collection I was talking about before. Uh, and we see that we have a value progress progress, and that's our value. So if we actually drag this out and we increase this, we can actually value up. Okay? We're going to put that as zero first. So it's zero to one. Okay, that's that's just how it is. All right. So we can actually get out this. All right. And as well, you'll see there's a level sequence. And because the way we're doing it here is a little bit different. Okay, we're not going to entirely use verse as that's just it's a little bit more like annoying to do. And I feel like this way is better because it's more and you can animate it a bit more. So, yeah, uh, as well, so we could see here we have this level sequence, right? And basically it goes to from zero to one and I explain kind of what that is. It's basically just changing that progress value from zero to one and then based on this it will change how far the progress is right and these are just our two textures uh, uh yep these are two textures don't really matter and right here we have our widget so we have a, a event binding to this so you can actually change this text however you want um so in the code it actually changes it based on the progress as you saw in the beginning of the video so basically all we really did was just put an image here um that has our material for our progress bar pretty simple and then all we did was just add a view binding to this text so it connects to hud message device all right and as well uh we anchor these correctly and aligned the alignment correctly so it basically alignment is in the center and it will anchor to the nearest uh position on the screen so it'll scale correctly on all devices all right and boom we got all those done right so now we actually just need our code which i am going to leave in the description however however you will need a voxium subscription and don't worry there is a free trial if you'd like to try it out and it will allow you to have access to all of our videos codes from now on all right so that's basically it all right so we're actually going to now go to verse verse explorer and we're just going to create a new device here and we're just going to call this progress underscore bar underscore device all right and we're just going to create empty in my case because i'm going to actually paste it in and i'm going to show you guys the code and I'm gonna step by step go through it. Uh, and I'm going to let you copy the code from my screen. Okay. So it's not entirely that I'm just not letting you copy the code anymore, but yeah. So, all right. So I'm just gonna paste in the code here and I'm just going to rename the device. File is called progress bar underscore device. And now I'm going to go through a overview of what the code does here. Here, have a level class. And that's us since 
All right, so with our code here, first we have a level class. And the reason why we have this is mainly because since we're using this HUD widget method, it means each player is going to need a cinematic sequence and a HUD message device, okay? Which is a little annoying, but it allows us to have a bit more animations and make the progress bar just look better and it's easier to set up. So, and here we just define a few of our variable all right just have our level our max level all right and then we have completed level the difficulty base difficulty which is 1.0 and we have difficulty scaling all right so there we go we have those and obviously by their names you can tell what they do we have base difficulty which is just the difficulty uh normally and then it scales difficulty so that makes it harder and harder each time you level up all right and then we have a difficulty plier in class. So this allows us to just kind of this right here. Okay, difficulty multiplier in class allows us to actually edit the difficulty within the device. So we have an at editable property later on in the code, which you can change to change the difficulty of the progress bar. Okay. Or well, difficulty of the scale. Right. So we also have here message from a string. This is all it's doing is really just converting a string into a message for the HUD message device. And right here, we have our function and we do a little bit of a calculation here. We just convert the levels into max level and a level into a float. And then we divide by them. Okay. And then we turn our calc times 100 into a int. Okay? And our calc is right here. So we're just doing this calculation to convert it into a progress okay? percentage. All right. And we just print it out here. And here is where it updates it. All right. And then we also have persistable values. So if you actually want to, you can actually save the levels in this, right? So we have a level, max level, and all that. It just saves it and it works actually really best. It. So here we have our ESDA, uh, our HUD A, which is our array for our cinematic sequence and HUD message device. Okay, just, just going to say, get assigned based on the index of the player. Okay. The, based on the index of the player inside a player map okay or well in our case all players so just the whole players in the game it's based on their index okay so basically the first player would be zero the second player would be one and the third player would be two okay so that's just kind of how it is and it's based on that number Okay, so that's how it, it gets which devices the players can have. So we also have trigger test device or trigger device test. Well, basically, that's how we're just going to test it. We could step on a trigger and it increases the value. All right. And it's actually really easy to increase the value. So if you want to use it anywhere else, you can. And then we are. So basically, our at editables are basically just adjustments. These three right here are adjustments to whatever you want. Okay. So if you want difficulty, you could put it. If you want persistence, so it saves, you can do that. Or if you want difficulty, but you want a multiplier so it's like even harder uh after each time you level up you can also do that right okay and then we have our player hud map which just stores all of the classes with the agent as the key and then in our on begin we are just getting the players the index of them and then putting it on player spawn or join and then we are basically running the function okay you wait a little bit and then we subscribe players into e event event okay this is just so that this doesn't like so two players don't just get player joined at the same time and then it little breaks the code okay and then we subscribe to on player removed that's later on for removing the player or player yeah out of the array or the map that we have okay okay and then here we just put description to the triggered event or our trigger device test all right okay so over here player join non suspends you're basically spawning our on player join because we have a sleep in here which waits and for that, you're going to need a suspense tag. So we have to use, okay, so it runs it on a different thread or creates a new thread to run it. Okay, so here we just get the index player. So we do a for loop through all the players and check player that joined is in this table. Okay, so then we compare it so we can actually get the index. Okay, and I already told you this. We're using that to get what device the player is going to have. And then we just create the level class, put it into the map. And then here, these are just for our persistence values here. So if you want persistence, it true and then it uses the persistence values. Okay, and then down here, we have our difficulty multiplier, which just sets that variable we had before and it sets it to that difficulty multiplier. Okay? And then here, we're just playing the cinematic sequence and we're pausing it uh so then it does not just keep continuing 
and then it breaks our whole product okay and then we sleep a little and then we update the text and animate the ball all right so here's our on player removed which just removes the player out of the player hud map here and then we have our trigger function and that's just for our testing here and that's this is the function that we're going to use it's really simple all you do is just put upgrade update progress put the player in and then put how much you want the, the level to change by so you can even make this negative and it would work okay so you could do that but i think you will need to put an if statement to check if they don't go below, below zero okay and then in our update progress here we just get the current difficulty this is this is just to change the difficulty based on the level here okay so that's basically what it does and then here we have our update progress bar q okay and the reason we have this here is because we do not want to spam the progress. We want it so it, if you spam it, right, we want it so it does it one by one by one. Okay, so I'm not going to explain everything here, but basically that's what's going on. Okay, so it does it is processing queue and it checks if they are running they're still on that progress animation okay so down here we just update the persistence and then we update the tech. all right and in our update bar here we're just doing the calculation again to get how much we need to change by okay so we do level times 1.0 divided by max level time 1.0 and then we do calc times max level Okay, this is how we're getting the frame that we need to update it. All right, and here, all we're doing is basically setting the frame till the same as this number that we have right here, okay? Or if it's finished, and in which then it gets the difficulty and shows the new diff because it's based on the level, all right? And that's basically it for this code. So we're just gonna build changes, all right? And I'm going to minimize this. And now we can go to content browser here. We're just going to drag out our device and I'm just going to add this device over here. We can add the cinematic sequence device to drag this in. Okay, all over here. Then we're going to drag this level sequence in. So loop playback is going to be false. Auto play false. Visibility is instigator only. Okay, and then we want finish completion state override. We want force keep state. Okay, and there we go. So now we can click plus, drop this in. So whenever you want to add more of these, which I recommend because then each player has their own one which we want we just duplicate this duplicate this and all that okay so now we're gonna add a plus here and then we're going to go to all and we're gonna get our hud message device i'm gonna drag it in and we're gonna show on round start sure or actually we don't okay there's a reason for that because if we do do that it's gonna break a little bit and we want it based on our verse code where it adds it right here and here update hud text okay so then we want message recipient triggering player okay? we only want it to show on one player okay show for duration no we don't we don't want it. and you can add a sound if you want I, I, it doesn't really matter that's your peripheral personal preference and then placement we're actually going to do top center okay and then we're going to put our widget in here boom got our widget right there okay and if you really want to, you could actually put custom over here for our placement and then just do a uh, op center again and then you could do that. But op center works too. Doesn't really matter. Um, So we don't need to change anything here. We don't need to do this. So behavior if, yeah, we can just ignore that. And then does this matter get message get queued? That doesn't really matter. And we don't want any animation for these. Okay. Um, there's a reason for that. That's because when you update the text, uh, it's going to do the animation again and it's a little broken. Okay. However, there is definitely a way you can animate it with it within the widget. Okay. Which I will try to figure out in a later video. If anyone has the answers to that, please comment below. Okay. That would be a big help to actually everyone here. So override default textile. You can do that. It doesn't really matter. You could just change this however you want. And yeah. That's really all you have to do. So we could save this. Okay. And then we could I drop our HUD message. Right? Save this. Okay. And then we just need our trigger, which is really simple. All we do is just get out trigger. Okay. And then we drag this here. All right. And we just select our trigger. So uh, we could put want persistence, want difficulty. Doesn't matter. I'm going to put want persistence and I'm going to put want difficulty. All right. So now I'm going to launch the session and we're going to test this out in game. All right, guys. One, uh, one thing I want to point out is if you get this message, it's fine. It's just that you added files into the content folder. It's a little annoying about that. So just write, just put run fix up and it will just fix everything and boom, there's no issue. Okay. So we are at now. So we're going to start the game and we're going to see that I believe it worked. So I'm actually already went in the game. Uh, so 
it saved it, which we saw it works. So let's see if uh, the difficulty works. It's printing out difficulty one play out. So if we step on this continuously, boom, boom, boom. If we just keep stepping on it, all right. So boom, boom, and now it says difficulty 2.0. And we can actually see it is a little bit more difficult now to do this, as you see. That's actually pretty difficult to now. But yeah, so if we actually increase the difficulty scaling, it would actually make it even hard, all right? So there we go works perfectly so please let me know your suggestions down below what you want next and 